Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be gathering all sorts of gems. I mean, everybody likes diamonds, right? Of course we do. And we're going to be getting things like amber and rubies and emeralds. And we're going to be trying to sell them over the year for different fashion and certain rarity. How about the Queen's Necklace here? This is a reprint of an original game from Days of Wonder. Uh, but it's being reprinted from Cool Mini or Not here. This was designed by Bruno Cathala and Bruno Fiduti, two of my favorite designers. Uh, it's from two to four players, plays in about 45 minutes. It's a card playing game, a little bit of manipulation and speculation. Let's take a look, I'll show you how it's played. In Queen's Necklace, over three different rounds, you're going to have a chance to sell a bunch of different types of gems. Now, at the beginning of the game, there's four different types of gems always, which is diamonds, emeralds, rubies, and ambers. And these are randomly going to get set during the game, showing you that the, this is first place in fashion, second, third, and fourth, and they're worth a certain amount of points, 0, 1, 2, and 3, when you sell that gem. And that's only happened three times per game. You're going to be collecting gems over the game, and you're going to be selling them in those three different sale rounds during the game, and you're going to be trying to get the most points in doing that. So how does the turn work? It's very simple. What you'll do is each turn you have 10 pounds, which is money, to spend. And at the beginning, each card they have a little disc here, a clear disc that shows at the top of each of these rows. So this is worth six, and it's one diamond. This one costs 10, but it's three emeralds, six, six, and 10. Now you have 10 pounds to spare. So in this case, uh, if uh, I would probably just pull one of these, maybe I'll uh, pull the diamond. So I'll pull this one for 10 pounds, and this will be put into my hand. Now at the beginning of the game, everyone gets four of these cards to start the game, and all these cards are kept secret from everybody else. Now after that happens, every other one that was not selected devalues by one. And so these go down one thing. So now these are worth four, eight, four, four, and a new one will come out. Now if any time this goes down to the X, it gets devalued, it gets pretty much all the way down, this would get discarded, and a new one would come out. Now as you can see, not always are there gems. Actually, some of them have some characters. And there's different types of characters. These are called influence characters. And these ones do certain things. Like for example, if you have this card in your hand, you can play it at the beginning of your turn before you spend your pounds, and you can have extra three pounds to buy this turn. So it's a one time, instead of having 10 pounds to spend, you could have 13. Now this lady here, uh, the favorite, she's influence. You move the gem tile of your choice to the first fashion ranking position, shifting them all down. So again, influence cards can always be played at the beginning of your turn before you spend your 10 pounds. And that one specifically would say, well, I wanted rubies to be first and it would push these down and now rubies is the one that's the, the, the best in fashion. So it turns very simple. You're spending 10 pounds, you're devaluing all the other ones. At the beginning of your turn, if you want to play an influence card. So let's say it's my turn here and this is six, this is four, I'll spend my 10 to grab this one and this one. All these get devalued down like this and two new ones come out and come up all the way. Like that and they go up like that. Now on a, on a subsequent turn of mine, it would be the next player's turn now. And since I grabbed this card and the subsequent card, that's when I would play this at the beginning of my round. And you continue to do this. Now, this is gonna continue to happen until one of these merchant cards comes out. There's three of these in the deck, so there'll be three scorings during the game. The first two are approximately one third and two thirds through this giant uh, draw pile. And when this comes up, we stop and we do a sale. And what you're trying to do with a sale is you're trying to figure out which of the gems that you're going to sell this round. Now, I've got a lot of rubies, so I'll put these together and I kind of sort of stack them like this. And I have, let's see, some diamonds and I have uh, an amber. So let's say I'm going to also sell some diamonds. I'll put them like this and I'll try to sell this amber. So I've got three different things that I'm trying to sell. So this would be mine after everyone has secretly chosen. We flip them all up and we see that I have three, four, five rubies, four diamonds and one amber. And we would be able to see now what everybody else is trying to sell. Now this is where the rarity comes in and this rarity gets set each selling round. Now what happens is we look at these, we see which gem is the rarest, I mean which one has the least amount of gems out there. So let's say Amber was out there as the first rarity, meaning it is the most rare, there's the least of them out there. And so that one gives a plus three. Well, let's say second place was diamonds, let's say third place was emeralds, and let's say fourth place, meaning 
This was the least rare, meaning there were the most of them out there. They're first in fashion, but there's a lot of them there. So you would add these up. So whoever had the most, the majority of these rubies, would sell them all just one. It doesn't matter how many they have. If you have the majority, you sell it once for three, in this case, plus zero, so for three points. The one who sold the, the, the diamond would get two plus two, so four points. And emeralds would get one plus one, so they'd get two points. And the ambers would get three plus zero, so three points. So only one person is selling each of those during each of these sale rounds. And as you score each of those sale rounds, you would move your little guy up this point track here. And once you've scored that, these rarity tokens would just come off and they would just get ready so that the next time you go through a sale round, the rarity can change. And obviously, as you can see, some of these can change with cards as to which one's best in fashion. Now we just talked about the sale. I want to show you some of the special character cards that are in the game. Some of them will have to do with sales. This one does not, but it's the queen. There's some reaction cards. They have a gold back. Play this card to take the gem card that has just been revealed during the devaluation phase. So anytime a card comes down here, it comes to the X and it gets removed and a new card comes out. If it's a gem and you have this card in your hand because you previously got it, you throw it down and you can get that gem for pretty much for free. The Alchemist, during a sale, you can transmute one of your ruby, emeralds, or diamonds into another gem. So for example, if you had, were selling uh, diamonds, but you really wanted them to be rubies, you would put this guy with your, with your, with your uh, diamonds and turn it into another, uh, another gem except the amber. So here the courtier, this is an immediate action. As soon as you get them, you keep it face up and you have one extra pound every turn. So instead of having 10 pounds, you always have 11. Another immediate action from the lady in waiting. Keep this card face up and you'll get all the cards you would through devaluation. So for example, as cards are getting devalued, usually when it hits the X, they get discarded, but every card this does, you would actually get as long as you have her. The Astrologer, draw the top card of the draw pile and place it in your hand. Wow, pretty cool. It's just kind of like a random thing there. Now here's some influence cards. These are the ones you can play at the beginning of your turn before you spend your 10 pounds. We have the Confession. You can look at all the cards in another player's hand. The Ring, this is a sale card. So when you're selling gems, so for example, I said I had a bunch of emeralds I was selling. If I put this with my emeralds, if I win the sale, you sell one more jewel. So normally we sell one jewel when you have the most. For example, if you remember, if I had the most uh, rubies, it would be three points plus however rare it was. But if I had this with my rubies, basically you would double your points. You're selling two of them. So that the ring is really good for getting a lot of points. The thief is an influence card. Steal a card at random from another player's hand. Everybody hates this card because they get mad when you steal stuff. The pearl, this is when you're selling things. The rarity of the gem type is increased by one. So when I, when I was selling gems, I had this pearl with my ambers. Instead of being second, this would be first, and it would swap. So now this would be the rarest. The forger uh, has you choose an opponent and a gem type, and they have to discard a gem type of that, that kind. Now we're going to the meanest card in the game. There's two of these. The sale. During a sale, any jewel of the type with this king cannot be sell, sold that round. So if I throw my king down with a bunch of rubies... I could pretty much know I'm not going to win rubies, but someone else is, and anybody that round cannot sell rubies. So someone could have thrown a ton of rubies, and they can't sell them with the king. Very mean card. But there is one card that combats it. There's one card in the deck. When you get this card, you get the queen's necklace in front of you, so everyone knows you have it. Essentially, it protects you. So if, if you were going to sell rubies that round, and someone played the king with rubies, meaning you can't sell them, if you, try, if you have the queen's necklace and you are selling rubies, basically not only do you get to sell rubies, pretty much canceling out the king, but the player who played the king has to basically, you steal five points from them. So this is a really way, this is a way to really uh, deter someone from playing the king card if you have the queen's necklace. Those are some of the, you know, the special characters in the game. So you'll continue through three rounds, through three sale rounds, and when the third merchant comes up, you do your final scoring, and whoever has the most points then is the winner. Now, if you watch my videos, you probably know that Bruno Cathal is my favorite designer. I also recently had a podcast with Bruno Fiduti, and I also like a lot of his games too. So you put these two together, and you reprint it into something as beautiful as this, and of course it's something I'd be very interested in. Let's first talk about the things I liked about the game. Uh, the new artwork is awesome. It's that sort of cartoonic style. It's very nice to look at. The colors are good. The board, there wasn't even a board in the original game, but having the board, it's not necessary, but it is nice to have everything there, uh, to have both things, to put, put where the tokens, put the things. Not necessary, but very nice touch, and it's definitely a warm welcome to have that. 
so the game, let's get onto the gameplay itself. So the artwork and the components, everything, awesome. Very good updated version of that effect. Now the things that I liked about the game, I like the idea that there's certain gems that are just more fashionable during the game. And those are going to get manipulated by some cards and people messing around and doing this. But over the course of the game, there's some things and the more fashionable, the more, the more they cost. I also like that when you're selling the gems, uh, you're going to be putting down gems and you're trying to win or be the person to sell that gem, have the majority, but you also want to have the rarest one. So it's this interesting balance of like, hey, I want to sell this, but I want to be the one that sells the least amount of these things. Like, it's the most rare. And that sort of balance really messes with your head, and I like it. It's a good challenge. It's like, hey, I want diamonds to be the rarest. So I'm only going to put two. I'm going to hope everyone else thinks it's rare because maybe it's only like third on fashion. I'm going to hope everyone else kind of left that alone. I can just win it with two, and it's the rarest, and that will boost me up. But you don't know what the other people are going to do. You're watching what they're doing, and you're trying to see what they're taking. You're trying to count cards and see what happens. And so the, the main mechanics of the game I really like. Now this kind of brings me to sort of some of the things that I didn't like about the game. And I just talked a little bit about the memory element. This game, if you really want to play it well, you really have to pay attention to everything everybody's taking. You need to have a good memory. You need to watch what people are selling. If you can count cards and you can remember what people took and remember what people sold, you'll have a good idea of where you stand. And some people might not like that you need to do that. Now you can play the game and not mem memorize anything. You just have it if you really if you're trying to play this competitively and you want to win, you'll need to do that. If you're just playing for fun, that's not that big of a deal for you. The other thing is the cards, the special abilities. Many of these that I showed, they aren't random-esque, but they feel like they're random. Okay, it's like I'm gonna play the thief. I'm gonna steal a card from you. The last game we played, I stole a card from somebody during the last round, and it was the king card, and that person was so upset. Right before the last merchant came up, someone played a thief and stole that very same card from me. And I was like, ugh. So sometimes these randomness cards can really affect the game. It has a lot of a take that feel to it. Uh, the king, wow, you can't sell anything. Oh man, you play that at the right time and you totally mess somebody over and they can't sell their big thing. That could take down their whole game. And that can make someone really angry. So this game has sort of enough randomness to it that people might not like that because the special abilities, they're not all balanced. Some of them are super powerful, some of them are not that powerful. Um, so there's that. And, so, and there's a lot of take that. So if you don't mind a memory element, if you, if you like take that, if you feel like that you're okay if somebody just totally wallops you, but you can do the same to them, and as long as it's, the cards are open to everybody, anybody can grab those. If you're okay with those swinginess where you think you know what you're doing, then you just kind of get blindsided by a card and it really hurts you. If you like that sort of combative thing, then you're gonna like this game. Uh, if you hate having things done to you that you think are random, you're not going to like this game. So just be aware that the powers are not balanced, they feel kind of random, and you can get really blindsided. Um, so that's pretty much the game. It's got a lot of good things going for it. It's got some things that personally I didn't like, but maybe those are things that you may or may not like. But after this, you should kind of get a feeling for it has the things I like or not. Definitely a try before you buy it for me, and that's the Queen's Necklace.